excuse for inaction. It was a genuine, it's a genuine attempt to understand in depth the issues because obviously there are health and safety issues and there are coordination issues and you don't necessarily want people just climbing up any electricity pole to lay a fiber because you could uh, end up with some serious problems arising from that. So we want to examine those issues in detail, issue very clear guidance if we can as soon as possible and if we feel that there's also a need for legislation to make that easier in terms of uh, infrastructure sharing, uh, then that is what we'll do. We're relatively technology neutral as far as broadband is concerned, so obviously people talk about laying fibre, satellite could be part of the mix, and of course, particularly in rural areas, uh, mobile broadband can also be uh, part of the solution. I'm at the moment involved in a very complex process to try and release spectrum in the 800 megahertz and 2.6 gigahertz spectrum levels. Uh, it's incredibly complicated because all the main mobile operators have uh, very serious interests in all of this. Uh, we would like to get that spectrum available uh, as soon as possible and to have it auctioned as soon as possible. I can't give a firm date as to when that will happen because of the complexities of those issues, but it is a very, very important issue, particularly as more and more people access more and more data over their mobile phones. In terms of direct central government support, we have uh, a unit as part of the Department of Business called Broadband Delivery uh, UK. Uh, and we also have a sum of money available from the digital switchover underspend. This was the money that was made available to switch uh, television from analog to digital. Uh, and thanks to the enterprising nature uh, of the British public, the uh, hundreds of millions of pounds that have been set aside to educate and train people about digital television uh, has not proved uh, to be necessary. So we've got a significant sum around the uh, 200 million pound mark which we can make available to support local broadband initiatives. Uh, but the other thing that Broadband Delivery UK is doing is a lot of technical work which we hope will uh, be useful for communities up and down uh, the country. For example, on the industry day we held in July, we conducted three theoretical exercises about how to provide broadband service services in rural uh, locations. Uh, and it turns out that these exercises have been incredibly valuable. Uh, a lot of the businesses that attended that day have put a huge amount of resource into analysing those issues. And although it may sound slightly odd, given that these are businesses whose day-to-day -day work is in broadband, uh, they apparently learnt a lot from actually knuckling down and conducting these exercises. And what that means is that when we take what we've learned from those exercises and synthesise it, it means that we'll be able to provide a model for rural communities to implement broadband, which again should significantly uh, bring down the costs. But we're going beyond the theoretical as well uh, and we announced very early on that we were going to conduct what we call uh, superfast broadband pilots. Uh, although I suspect, um, I mean in reality what was happening is that we will lay superfast broadband in three rural areas and they will, that will be sustainable broadband that will be there uh, forever as it were. Uh, but again, we will learn from the physical nature of doing uh, those exercises. We've received 63 proposals uh, and 11 have been put forward by regional development agencies and by the devolved administration. And in the first phase, these three pilots uh, will have government financial assistance with the actual cost of deployment. And they'll be in commercially challenging locations and we expect the exercises to begin in the middle of 2011. Uh, I want uh, the other point I want to make is that we have this, uh, as I say, excellent organisation, Broadband Delivery uh, UK, which has a number of experts. I want to uh, make that a more outward-facing organisation so that more people uh, are aware of the work it's doing. Uh, and I, I hope uh, towards the end of the year to publish a paper uh, which will show not only where we are in, as a country in terms of uh, where broadband is, uh, but also 
address some of these key issues in terms of next steps as far as infrastructure sharing is concerned, next steps as far as sharing public networks are concerned. I think the great value of coming to a conference like this for a minister like me, and I've been to a similar conference in Herefordshire, and I've received delegations from counties like uh, Suffolk uh, and from communities in Bristol and elsewhere, uh, is first of all it shows that there is an enormous amount of interest uh, and passion about the need for broadband. Uh, there is also, I think, a huge amount of effective teamwork going up, uh, uh, taking place in communities up and down the country. Uh, and it is, uh, again, although it may sound slightly prosaic or even trite, it is very, very important uh, that ministers and officials uh, come to meetings like this and actually find out what's going on uh, on the ground because what you've achieved uh, in some areas in Cumbria will provide effective learning uh, for us in central government and then we can use that learning and disseminate it around the country. I think it's very, very important when we conduct uh, this exercise over the next few years as we uh, have this ambition to roll out super fast broadband that we don't reinvent the wheel uh, and that we recognise pioneers uh, wherever they may be and particularly uh, Daniel and Kevin, uh, who I met yesterday, in terms of uh, what they've achieved uh, in putting uh, superfast broadband in a very rural area at the most effective cost. So we're not going to be precious uh, about uh, not invented here syndrome. We're going to learn uh, from anyone and everyone who's actually doing this work, which is why it's incredibly important, as I say, that there is a partnership between central government, local government, uh, big telecom providers, smaller telecom providers, uh, and also community broadband networks who are often uh, the most effective organizations in pushing forward change uh, and holding, as it were, the bigger organizations to account. So, uh, as I say, there's a massive amount of enthusiasm. Government is here to support uh, rural broadband, but it is an exercise that will, I think, come from the bottom up in the sense that it will be local communities coming forward with their own ideas and proposals, and there will then be a partnership, I hope, with uh, some financial support from, from central government uh, to get rural broadband out. So, Rory, thank you very much indeed for asking me to speak at this conference. Uh, I came up yesterday, I've already learnt a great amount, had a lot of conversations, I survived Alice Unwin's driving. Uh, she uh, is a brilliant driver and she has brilliantly driven uh, this conference uh, and made it happen. So let's keep meeting, uh, let's get on and start putting fibre in the ground, start connecting communities, uh, do it as it were in a very British way, uh, imaginatively uh, and as cost effectively and as quickly as possible. Thank you. Uh, please.